Well, hi, everybody. This is Heidi St. John. You guys have found me at the Off the Bench podcast. Thank you for listening. Today, I'm going to take the a balance of my time and continue to answer questions from listeners. And there are a lot of really great ones in the queue today. Stick around. I think you're going to be encouraged. All right. So yesterday, I sort of took a little bit of a break from answering your questions to address all the things that are happening in the news. You almost can't keep up with the insanity that's coming out of our out of our government right now and just politically and everything else. But I'm, I'm going to continue just to remind you that we can find an anchor for our soul, the Bible teaches us, in the Word of God, to know who we are, uh, to be able to listen for the voice of the Holy Spirit, that still small voice of the Holy Spirit, and to be able to walk in the peace that passes understanding. A joy, like peace, is not dependent on our circumstances. Joy and and peace, it's cousin, you know, peace, really. Uh, the two of them should go hand in hand. They are the unmistakable sign of the presence of God at work in our lives. And so we shouldn't be, I don't want you guys to be troubled, be, you know, like, no, nah, that's not the right thing. It's not that I, I don't want you to be troubled. It's that I don't want you to lose your peace and lose your joy because you start hyper-focusing on what's happening politically or what's happening in the news or, you know, we can we can get so wrapped up in it that we forget that ultimately, uh, remember, it goes back to jurisdiction. What has God given me jurisdiction over? And I don't have jurisdiction over what happens in the trial of Donald Trump. I have absolutely no jurisdiction, no authority to speak into the life of Joe Biden or any of the other uh, really crazy politicians that are ruining the beautiful states of Oregon and California and Washington. But you know what I do have? I have access to the one who does. And I'm going to encourage you guys continuing to just get off the bench and onto the battlefield. Ask the Lord, what do you want me to do? There are a lot of people saying a lot of things like just talk, 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 talk. A lot of talking heads, a lot of pundits out there right now, but they're just talking. They're making an awful lot of money talking, but they're not actually putting their money where their mouth is. They're not actually getting out there and making a difference in the culture. But you can do that in whatever jurisdiction God has you in. Some of you guys, uh, God's going to God's going to have you partner with my organization. and You're going to help us start homeschool resource centers around the country. I mean, there has to be opportunity for God's people to actually put feet to their faith and to get out there into the culture and really make a difference for the gospel. And so I want to just encourage you guys to do it. If the news is upsetting you, and I said this to a mom in in uh, Kentucky the other day, if the news is upsetting you to the point where you lose your joy and you're constantly, you know, hand wringing and whatever, stop listening. Just stop. Just stop listening to the news. Put it down. And get back into the word of God and say, Father, what do you want me to do? I'm here for such a time as this. And God wants you to be encouraged. And I want you to be encouraged and for what God has for you. Uh, Andrea in Canada wrote in and she said, and this kind of went back to what I was saying the other day. I think family family is a, a, a tricky uh, topic, <laughs> isn't it? Because you can choose your friends, but you really can't choose your family. And we're sort of stuck with each other. And in, my, in in almost every case, I always say, listen, if you can get along with your family members, I always tell this to my kids, if you can get along with your siblings, you can get along with anybody. Uh, we bear with one another. That's what we're called to do. But there are certain instances, like you heard me talk about on Monday, of the, the in-laws that are encroaching on the parental right and responsibility to be the authority on matters of uh, spirituality, on parenting, that kind of thing in the lives of their children. And sometimes we have family relationships that are just absolutely toxic. And when that happens, you need to draw the line. Sometimes it's the, their relationship enders, their deal breakers inside of relationships. And we need to be listening for the voice of the Lord. And Andrea wrote in and said, thanks for your ministry. Uh, you're an encouragement. Thank you, Andrea. A family member blew up at me having misunderstood the intent behind several things I've said over the past years. I understood that she needed to let it out, so I stood there in tears, listening, shaking my head at all the unreasonableness of it all, and apologizing for my part in making her feel that way. She has never apologized for the outburst, and as far as I know, she still thinks I'm a monster. I've never had any ill intentions toward her family. I care for them very much, but I'm always on high alert, careful not to say anything that she might take the wrong way. 
I just can't relax around her. Do I try to let it go? Is what she thinks of me any of my business? Or do I ask her what she wants out of our relationship? Thank you for the insight. Well, it sounds like, I mean, I don't know, you're saying that this is a family member, but I don't know if it's a family member once removed, if you're talking about a sister-in-law, I don't know if you're talking about a sister or your parents. Um, and it sounds like whatever her grievance was against you was pretty significant. And so I always think, you know, the Bible says, Paul said, we're to make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. We're supposed to um, live at peace and as much as it depends on us to live at peace with everyone. I think this absolutely starts in your family. So I would be inclined. It sounds like you guys haven't talked about this since the blow up. And so I might say, hey, you know, do you mind if I talk to you for a minute? I just want to be sure that we're OK, because I feel like things are still tense between us. I don't know how you're feeling, but I, I feel like I can't relax around you. And I just want to be sure that there's nothing else that's standing between us and see how she responds. And if she responds badly, then that's your cue that this is not a safe person for you. That's your cue that the, the, the walls need to go up a little higher and the boundaries need to be clearer because you don't need to be in a relationship with somebody that treats you that way or who won't fix it, right? And we've all seen things like this uh, in families over the years. And certainly I've counseled many, many women over the years who are in toxic friendships. Women are the absolute worst. The, the guys will just get in a fight. You know, it's a knockdown, drag out, whatever. Girls are catty and gossipy and ooh, it's just awful. And it sounds to me like you're being this woman's emotional hostage. And that is not God's heart for you. And it certainly isn't the hallmark of a good relationship. And so I would ask that very simple question. And then depending on how she responds to you, that can be your cue to sort of back out, put up some boundaries. You don't have to disown her or be a jerk or anything like that. But it sounds like it's probably time for some boundaries. Uh, this is a great Apple review that came in. Thank you guys for leaving reviews over at iTunes. I appreciate it. This one came in from Mad T. 30. She said, my eyes have been opened. Heidi's amazing and knowledgeable for many topics. I'm praying my spirit will be lit on fire for my family and my kids and their friends. This is a must for everyone. Thank you for that review. This one, one of my original listeners. I love that. So I just met somebody uh, the other day who said that she'd been, she was a brand new listener to the show and she tried to go back and binge listen. But you guys, I've been putting out this show for, you know, eight years. So I guess if you want to have like a Heidi St. John binge listening weekend, it might take you a week. <laughs> to listen to to listen to all all of my shows, but it just encourages me so much to hear from you. And I want to thank you guys for leaving reviews. Brandy in Texas said, I've been doing the irreplaceable Bible study. The quote from C.S. Lewis, children are not a distraction from the more important work. They are the more important work, along with self-reflection, questions on that same day have really convicted me. Brandy, I'm happy to hear that. For those of you who missed that study, Irreplaceable, uh, right now it's time for the for the, the new study that I'm doing called Supernatural, uh, Having Created and Changes Everything, and that's happening right now at faiththatspeaks.com. Kim has a question. She said, I was glad to hear you answer Linda's question about having a child come out as homosexual. Sadly, we're dealing with the same situation. We love our child and have told him this and told him that we will not change. We've also told him we can't support him in his homosexuality and why, which he already knew. My question is, how do we support him while not supporting his choice? What do we do when he wants to bring his significant other home? Now, this, uh, Kim, I appreciate the question. This is one of the most heartbreaking aspects of this particular uh, kind of sin because it really does damage to relationships, particularly if you've got little ones uh, in the home and you want to shield them from sinful lifestyles or confusing them about sexuality, we really have to hold that, hold to that standard. I think the most important thing that we can do is always say, I love you, I love you, I love you. There's nothing that should separate a parent from his child in terms of the love that the mom and dad have for that child, whether he's gay or straight. I mean, there are a lot of kids. We think about this, you guys. There are a lot of, a lot of, of, uh, kids and young people and actually everybody who is sinning, their sin is just as egregious before the Lord, right? Maybe it's not the sin of homosexuality, but it's a different sin. Maybe it's uh, constantly lying or maybe it's, you know, um, 
having, you know, adultery in your heart. But I heard a guy the other day, I'm not even going to say his name because I was so disappointed. One of my favorite conservative commentators, who isn't a Christian, but he's a practicing Jew, was talking about the, uh, the you know, the, the verse in the Bible says when a man, you know, if you look at, at a woman with lust in your heart, you've already committed adultery. He's like, well, in Judaism, we don't believe that. There's only one member of your body that you can commit adultery with. And so he excused pornography. And I was like, boy, you might not violate the letter of the law, but you absolutely violated the spirit of the law. And there's a lot of Christians in that circumstance where they're they're looking at pornography, they're making excuses for it. So I I, I want to be really careful because I get these questions all the time that we don't just get hung up on the big unforgivable sin is homosexuality or it's the sin of transgenderism because we want our lives to be set apart. Jesus said, "You be holy as I am holy." So we should be living a life that honors the Lord in the quiet places of our of our lives when no one else is watching asking the Lord uh, to search our hearts, to try to see if there's anything in our hearts that is causing there to be um, a disconnect between us and and our growth in the Lord. But when it comes to a a child that's living in sexual sin, uh, I would encourage you, let your child know that you love them, love them, love them. When it comes to having uh, bringing those relationships front and center in your home, if you've got little children, that'd be an absolute deal breaker for me. Um, maybe you go out and you have dinner with your son, um, but don't disown him. Don't, don't, uh, I mean, if there's going to be a push away from the relationship, I would say don't let it come from you. So uh, I had another mom write in and say that she, her daughter was getting married to a woman. She wanted to know if she would participate, if she should participate in the wedding. My answer was, Absolutely not. I mean, I wouldn't. I can't. It's not a sin issue. I can't tell you, thus saith the Lord. But to me, that's akin to my child telling me, hey, mom, I'm going to go in the back alley on 8th and Main Street at seven o'clock at night and I'm going to shoot heroin into my veins. Would you like to come and watch? Well, no, I'm not going to come and watch that because I know that ultimately what you're doing is going to bring sorrow into your life. And I'm not going to stand here and celebrate that. And so these are very difficult and painful issues. We're going to be dealing more uh, on these uh, these relationship issues in the days to come here at the show, but I appreciate you guys writing in. Uh, Anonymous in Kentucky wants to start a homeschool cooperative. She said there's not one where she lives. I have actually written a manual on how you guys can start a homeschool cooperative where you live, or you can start a homeschool resource center. We have written guidebooks from start to finish, and you can find them at firmlyplantedfamily.org. Melanie in Florida same thing. She wants suggestions for starting a homeschool co-op. And again, I love, uh, Melanie, that you said it was out of your your comfort zone, that you had looked for something, but you couldn't find one. And so now you're going to just start one on your own. Listen, that is exactly how I got started in Northern Washington. I looked for something to put my kids in. There wasn't one. And so me and my three little kids just went around to every grocery store and every Starbucks. You know, this was 20 years ago. And I started a a homeschool cooperative. You can do it. And again, I've written a book on how to do this, and you can find it at firmlyplantedfamily.org. All right. um, Where do I find short-term mission trips for my teens to be a part of? That question comes from Sarah in Georgia. You guys know I'm a huge fan of Worldview Academy and Summit Ministries. If you would like to send me some summer missions programs that you think are reputable, I frankly have huge concerns. So many things happening uh, right right now with these Christian camps and other places. I mean, you better really, really, really know these people and understand the heartbeat behind what they're doing and what they're going to be doing to make sure that your kids are safe emotionally and physically when your kids are with them. But uh, our kids have been to Worldview Academy. Also, I'm a huge fan, as you know, of Summit Ministries and my friend, Dr. Jeff Myers. And so those are two places that I would say with absolute confidence, uh, check those out. And then if you guys have short-term mission ideas, um, send them to me because I would absolutely love to hear about them and promote them uh, here at the show. Becky in Indiana, she said, I homeschooled my son until he was a junior in high school and then he went to public high school and then one year at a community college. Now he's at Cedarville University. He has many progressive ideas that are different from my ideas. I am a traditional conservative. I feel like a failure when I listen to him 
and I'm praying for him. Do you have any advice for me? My heart is breaking. Well, the first thing that I first thing I would say to you, Becky, is that you're absolutely not alone. This is happening uh, all over the country. I've told you guys before, this is why I think when your kids are little, immerse them in the word of God. Talk to them about the things that are true, that we know are true in the Bible. Uh, we have a, a Christian community that is really unhinged from scripture right now. And when you have that, then you, you're you going to fall prey. I mean, the Bible says this to every, every false teaching, uh, every wind of doctrine that comes along. And so you could put the progressive Christianity in sort of the wind of doctrine, like this is the way the culture is going. You guys heard me say yesterday that I believe we're going to see the beginning, if not the full blown persecution of Christians in this country, if we don't get new leadership and a change in direction and a change in attitude. But I don't see that necessarily on the horizon right now. And so your heartbreak over your son and his foolishness and his immaturity is understandable. And I would just encourage you, I mean, you you just told me in your letter, you know, you're praying for him. That's the best thing to do. And I pray specifically that God brings good influences into the lives of my kids so that long after they're out, you know, beyond the earshot of my voice and their dad's voice and telling them how much we love them and trying to point them to truth, that they would be around other people who would also point them to truth. But don't give up. Don't give up. Don't get discouraged. Certainly don't stop praying for your son and let him know. I would say, let him know that you are praying for him. Uh, uh, Aaron Allen left an Apple podcast review and she said she's been listening to me since a friend suggested that she read my book, Becoming Momstrong. She says, uh, I love your tenacity and, and passion and I want to be you when I grow up. <laughs> well, thank you, Aaron. Uh, you might not feel that way if you hung out with me uh, on the regular. But I do appreciate that. That was a cute one. I get sent a lot of a lot of cute ones in here, which I really appreciate. One more uh, question today comes from an anonymous listener in Florida. She says she's a Christian woman in her early 20s who desperately wants to make friends with like minded believers. But everyone is already so busy with their lives and existing friends that they push me away. Do you have any advice for me? I'm a part of six small groups at my church and I also volunteer, but I haven't made any real friends. Um. So this this breaks my heart. This reminds me a little bit of the question that I answered a couple of weeks ago from the mom who said she goes to church and she just feels alone there. She's not getting plugged in. I would encourage you to be as honest with the people in your community as you have been with me here at the show um, and just let them know I'm looking for for real uh, a friendship, you know, a deep abiding friendship. It's difficult, I think, as we get older. Um, I mean, I can only speak for myself in this regard, but I, I sort of understand, I think, where um, the angst comes from when it comes to trying to make friendships like that. So when I think about, you know, the, the, the limited amount of time that I have and the emotional bandwidth and the physical bandwidth, um, I'm still recovering from surgery. I'm doing a whole lot better, but that laid me flat for a good, probably five weeks. And before that I'm running for Congress and I've got, you know, seven children and now I've got, you know, sons and daughters-in-law and, my goodness, grandchildren, the whole thing. Sometimes I think it can be really hard when you already feel that your life is so busy. But I guess this is not so much for you as it is for all the other women and men who are listening to this today. I would encourage us all, and I'm talking about myself too, that God would give us a heart for the people around us who are lonely and struggling and need to feel connected. And in a culture that is so ridiculously connected, right? We're connected on the internet, we're connected with our text messages and uh, social media and all the things, we're very disconnected relationally. And so I would encourage you, those of you who are listening to this, really ask the Lord uh, where he wants you to uh, to land in terms of reaching out to the people in your community. And as far as this uh, this letter goes from this particular listener, I would say uh, anonymous in Florida, um, I would be if it was if I was in your in your position, I would be very, very honest with the people that are around you and just say, I'm really trying to connect. I'm trying to make, you know, lifelong friends. What's the best way to do that? And then really ask the Lord to give you wisdom and insight into what those relationships require. And so as we give grace to each other, 
for the different seasons of life that we're in. We ask the Lord to give us friendships, to open the doors to those meaningful relationships where we can have a true um, exchange of ideas and that heartfelt listening that happens in healthy relationships. And that's really what you need. And so that's what I'm gonna be praying for you for. And in the meantime, just know that you are loved, that God loves you. And he really does have those, you, that, that friendship that you're looking for, I believe with all my heart that God has it for you. So keep talking, keep asking the Lord, and don't get discouraged, all right? Uh, God's got good things coming up for you. You guys, that is all I have time for today. And I still have a bunch more questions. You can reach out to me at HeidiStJohn.com forward slash mailbox Monday, or you can email me info at HeidiStJohn.com. Uh, tomorrow, my friend, the uh, the amazing Dale Partridge is going to come on the show. He has a brand new book out called Jesus and Your Gender. It's a book for children to just remind them of the beautiful design that God had in creating us male and female. So come back tomorrow for that. You're not going to want to miss it. And I will see you right back here at the intersection of faith and culture. <laughs>